I'm very happy to have Fahim Musa joining us today for a conversation around uh, going into consulting from a full-time permanent job. And part of the reason why I want to have Fahim on the show is because as business analysts, we have a lot of different types of career options that we could explore. And one of those career options is to give up the regular nine to five that you would have working in a full-time permanent job and to actually go out on your own on a consulting basis where you're helping your group of clients that you accumulate over time to solve the different types of challenges that they have. And so where Fahim fits into this picture is that Fahim uh, is the person that you would reach out to if you're trying to make that transition because uh, Fahim is an expert in helping new consultants or existing consultants land new clients and he has a process for how he does that. The reason why I want to have Fahim on here is to kind of impart a lot of his valuable knowledge around the consulting industry for business analysts. So thank you for taking the time out of your busy schedule Fahim to join us today. Thanks so much for having me, Imal. All right. Anything I missed? Anything you'd like to add to that introduction? I think it was perfect. Thank oh, you. excellent. And for our listeners, I'm going to be leaving all of Fahim's contact information below. So make sure you connect with him uh, after you watch this. Uh, Fahim, I'm wondering if we can just dive right into it uh, with uh, you giving us maybe your take on the current state of the consulting industry, uh, given the pandemic that we're up against right now. Okay, so in terms of the consulting industry, it's, it's a huge industry with many segments, but I'll just give you an overview. Like when the pandemic hit uh, in you know, late February, March, um, things were, went helter-skelter in the, in the consulting world. Professional services budgets were, were cut indiscrimin indiscriminately yeah. because nobody really knew what was going to go, what was going to happen. Um, some projects, like long-term projects, uh, for example, IT projects that would go on for two, two, two or three years, um, those kinds of projects where companies had already invested a lot in, um, mm -hmm. they, those, those typically did not get cut largely. Um, but the ones especially where um, individual consultants had to be present, like operations consulting, for example, manufacturing, et cetera, wherever they had to be present, those kinds of things, uh, uh, gigs started to get uh, cut. And also other types of strategy consulting, et cetera, et cetera. The IT consulting you know, things that you can do from home uh, and, of course, which where, where companies had, had a lot invested, mm -hmm. those things, uh, I, I, you know, uh, were continued largely. Yeah. But uh, in terms of, yeah, the, the state of consulting uh, in those months, March to maybe June, July, mm -hmm. till the end of the summer, um, things were, uh, things were pretty, uh, pretty rough. Yeah. But now... Um, as the economy has started to open up, you know, lockdowns have been lifted, uh, things are getting back, not, not to normal, but things that people are going back to work. Now, uh, there are different sets of problems, don't forget, like, you know, there, the whole work from home situation, it's not a normal recession, right? There's so many behavioral changes that have happened. Right. So there are new problems that have cropped up and new problems require new solutions. And uh, whenever there are uh, solutions required, companies are always going to, um, um, you know, reach out to consultants. So I would say that things are starting to get better as the economy opens up. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's, okay. That's, that's what's, yeah, that seems to be in line with the general trend of uh, everything else that's going on. The economy took a major hit when the lockdown actually started to happen. And consulting is really no different from that, right? So when the lockdown actually happened, it seems like uh, if the companies had critical projects that were mission critical that they really couldn't afford to let go of, they kept those running kept the consultants on there for a lot of other projects that they maybe had coming down the pipe. They kind of put them on ice and put them on hold, which kind of affected the consulting industry as a whole. Now, uh, business analysts have a lot of different areas that they can do different uh, types of consulting in. And uh, I can talk about that to our uh, audience members in, in different videos. But uh, for business analysts, um, I just want to get a sense of whether there is any kind of a difference between the, some of the terminology that gets used. So, we hear the terms consultant, the term freelancer, uh, the term contractor being thrown around a lot and it gets used interchangeably. I'm wondering if there is really any difference between those terms or are those terms that we can use interchangeably the way that we have been? Look, let me, let me preface this by saying that uh, I don't think there are standard definitions for these terms. So whatever I tell you now is just based on my understanding and my opinion. Yeah. So. I would say that a freelancer is a professional that, that works alone, 
right? Uh, you, you know, you can be a freelance consultant. You right. can be a freelance journalist. I mean, Got it. Uh, so uh, a freelancer doesn't necessarily mean a, a consultant, but uh, it's typically a person that works alone. Now, a consultant uh, can be part of an organization. Uh, they can, you know, be independent. Um, and typically, a consultant is a, a person that adds value based on some kind of specialized knowledge um, and, uh, you know, is brought in to solve a, a specific, uh, you know, to bring about a specific business result. Got it. Uh, that's the way I look at uh, consulting. It could be advisory. It could be you know, an engagement along a project, whatnot. Yeah. Um, my understanding of, of a contractor is uh, an, an, an individual that has a, a contract with uh, one organization that, that you know, uh, a kind of a long-term contract, like a, maybe a year or, or a couple of years. And typically contractors have that just one gig. Mm -hmm. And if you, you know, consultants, people who call themselves consult consultants um, and not contractors, they would have like multiple gigs and they would be, you know, um, have, they would have multiple clients basically. So that's my understanding of it. I mean, there's no standard yeah. definition. Yeah, like you said, there's no standard definition. And I also have uh, a way of defining it myself. Maybe I can run that through you uh, and you can maybe help me correct my thinking on that a little bit to see whether I'm thinking correctly about this or not. But the way that I've always thought about the differences between uh, consultants and contractors uh, is uh, you could really uh, take, uh, you know, house construction as a kind of a model. So let's say you buy a plot of land and you want to build yourself a brand new house on a fresh plot, plot of land. What would you need to do? Well, aside from having to deal with the city and everything else, you'd have to probably have hire yourself a architect, right? And what the architect would do is they would come in, they would ask a lot of probing questions to figure out what it is, exactly it is that you want. They'd help you dr draft up some blueprints. They might help you cost it out a little bit. Uh, but essentially what they do is they try to get a good sense of what you want and they kind of build a framework for what it is that you need. Now, when it comes time to actually building the house, the, you know, the, the uh, architect isn't really going to start rolling up his sleeves and, you know, laying concrete and, you know, putting up walls. What you would need for that situation is you would need a whole group of contractors to come in and build kind of what the architect has helped you blueprint. And so kind of the way that I've always thought about uh, the difference between a consultant and a contractor in the business analysis world is in those terms. If you want to be a consultant, you're more of an advisor who comes in and helps the client really understand at a high level what they want, blueprints it out, and maybe even stays on the, on the project throughout the whole uh, term to make sure that the contractors are doing things properly. But it's the contractors that come in, roll up their sleeves, and actually do all the work. Is that, is that way of thinking off? Or you know, is, is that uh, a way that we could start to think about the, the, these differences uh, for business analysts? I think it's fair enough what you said, the, the, you know, the difference between a consultant and a contractor. But, you know, a lot of the times what happens in the consulting world is that consultants get hired for a short term project, let's say a couple of months, three months to do that initial piece of work that you described. Yeah. But then because of the familiarity with the client and the familiarity with the environment and the, and, and the project they kind of stay on and, mm -hmm. you know, they become the contractor. Right. 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 So right. a lot of the times, a lot of the times you'll see uh, people have consulting companies. They have, you know, they're an independent consultant. They've got, you know, they've got the, uh, the company name and registration and everything. But then, you know, they're, they're contracted for a long-term project with, uh, with another company. Yeah, so yeah. You'll see, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah so, absolutely. You know, so, so that in, in some, sometimes the, the consultant becomes a contractor. So like, like, like we discussed, it's like these terms of pretty nebulous. Yeah. yeah, there's no, there's no, no standard, standard definition. definition, right? Yeah, excellent. So you know what, we'll just use them interchangeably. Uh, and I'm gonna make an attempt to try to provide some more clarity for business analysts specifically, if it's possible in the future, but we'll just use them interchangeably for now. Um, part of uh, what I wanted to kind of get an understanding from you is um, about some of the possible benefits of uh, doing consulting instead of doing a full time uh, permanent job. I know that there's a lot of benefits for employees in permanent jobs, right? You might have a sense of job security. Uh, you might have steady income. Uh, you know, you might want to stay with the same employer for a long time. Those are some of the benefits of full-time work. Can you talk to us about some of the benefits of doing consulting work? Well, well I'll start from, um, you know, the biggest benefit is it's the benefit of being, you know, 
you either be an employee uh, of an organization or you be, be a business owner. It's no business. It's no different from the benefits of being a business owner because that's what yeah. you're becoming, right? When you're going, when you're independent, you're becoming a business owner. And the benefits of uh, business ownership are in terms of income. It's there's, there's you know a, a greater potential. I wouldn't say unlimited, but mm-hmm. there's a far greater potential. Mm-hmm. And also, as a business owner, you know, you, you, you when you do things right, you get to create a discretionary time. Right. That's right. another resource that you, you build. So um, the two biggest benefits of business ownership, and it, like I said, it's, uh, it's the same thing with consulting because that's, that's business as well. Mm-hmm. It's uh, your in- income potential and discretionary time. So yeah. uh, that's the way I would, uh, I would look at it. Yeah. So the potential to make uh, a lot more money as a full timer, if I was to sum it up. And by discretionary time, I assume you mean that you have a lot more control over where you spend your time. So, you know, in a full time permanent position, you might have to show up eight to four or nine to five, you know, five days a week uh, and take the holidays off. As a consultant, you would have a lot more flexibility if uh, you've built up a certain amount of, uh, let's say, funds in your accounts from previous consulting work. You could possibly afford to take a bit of time off if you are interested in pursuing other endeavors. If you are uh, just interested in taking a longer vacation, there's nothing that's binding you to showing up into the office from nine to five in places uh, uh, in in situations you don't want to be in. So those are really the way that you would say are the two major benefits. Yeah. Yeah. Just add one more thing. Like uh, another benefit of of consulting. So consultants typically are specialized. uh, You know, they have some kind of specialized skill or knowledge. And people who become consultants from the from the from the corporate world, who strike out on their own, they they, they enjoy um, you know executing that specialty. They only want to do that. Right. Uh, in the corporate world, you're forced to do a lot of other things uh, that you don't want to do. So there is a little bit of there is that that charm of uh, you know uh, building something meaningful for yourself and creating some kind of impact based on the knowledge and skill that you have. People, people become consultants only when they have some kind of specialized skill and knowledge. Like you see all, a lot of consultants and most consultants, they're intelligent people, they're smart people, they've, they've got some expertise and they're, you know, they've, uh, they've really built up a, a lot of uh, uh, um, uh, knowledge and skills along the way. So, yeah. and, and because of that, they, they like doing that. And that's, that's another benefit of just, uh, of, you know, of, of uh, playing in that field. Yeah, that's excellent. That's actually the perfect lead into the next thing I was going to ask is uh, the next question I had in mind is around how a person actually knows when they're ready to go into consulting. And so from what you've just said, I I would say is that you're saying that, uh, you know, your advice on that is, is for a person to have a certain specialty, right? And so you have to know how to do one, possibly two or three things really, really well. And um, would how would somebody uh, decide, let's say, for example, I'm a business analyst who specializes in just doing business cases. Uh, now, uh, as a business analyst just doing business cases, that is me uh, having a specialty skill in business analysis, but very specifically in one area of business analysis, right? And so for uh, our business analysts and our community members, uh, can you give us some tips that, let's say, for example, I've been working for a company doing just business cases for the last three, four years, is there anything, uh, any kind of signals that I should look for internally to try to figure out whether I'm ready to take on this new big endeavor in my life? So let me start with this. Like, uh, remember, when you're getting into consulting, you're starting a business, right? Yeah. And you, when you start a business, you want to really um, start it if, because you see a problem in the marketplace. Right. Do you see like the, the, quest, the first question that you want to uh, uh, ask yourself if you want to get into consulting or starting a business is that what is the problem that I see? Do I see a major problem in, you know, in organizations that I work in or, you know, uh, that, that uh, you know, I'm familiar with it, that the organization that I have domain expertise in? Is there a problem? Are things that are things, you know, uh, being done the wrong way? Can mm-hmm. they be better? Can I change the status quo? Do I have do, do I have a solution for the problem that I'm, I'm seeing? And yeah. does it like, you know, hurt you to see that problem? So that's the origin of a business, right? Forget all the other things first. Um, is there a problem that you, that, 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 that you feel pained of witnessing? And do you have a solution in you that yeah. you don't, you know, see, be, see, you don't see being implemented? Right. So that's that- the first question. That's, that's actually a really good example. Um, I mean, it's a really good signal. 
And the way that I would kind of um, bring that down to the world of business analysis is for somebody, let's say you're a functional analyst that specializes in Oracle and you've been working for an organization for five, six, seven years, and you're seeing that there is this challenge uh, in the way that they do their updates, uh, or let's say the way that they handle their enhancement requests that are very specific to your area of specialization in whatever area of Oracle you work in, you're seeing this problem. Uh, what you could possibly do is to do maybe a bit of a survey of maybe some of the friends that you have that are in the same type of work that you're in to say, hey, is your organization uh, you know, experiencing this same problem? Uh, because I have a way that I could solve this problem. And if you do a bit of a, that type of a survey uh, as a functional consultant in Oracle or a functional analyst in Oracle, and you see that, that that's actually a problem that's very widespread, that would be a perfect niche for you to try to tackle on a consulting basis. And so you could very uh, specifically uh, get yourself into a, uh, a business analyst, Oracle functional consultant role who specializes specifically in solving one specific problem. And uh, if you're able to kind of get yourself into that position, then I think you would encourage them to maybe go into consulting because the income potential for that type of a consultant could possibly be much higher. Is that, does that kind of pass your uh, test uh, of uh, a person who should get into consulting? Uh, not yet. Uh, let me just add something else. Okay, good. Uh, well, what, you said is what you said is 100% valid, but let me just add something else. You, sure. You, you got you to figure out your personal life. You got to figure out your finances. Okay. Right. So uh, when you get into business, you got to remember that, you know, your income is going to be up and down. You're not going to have a paycheck every month. So um, you know, the way I look at I look at it is that, you know, the most ideal way to transition from corporate to um, independent consulting or any business is to start off um, doing it as a side project. Maybe you, get a, maybe you get a client or two on the side and, you know, moonlight as a consultant and see what it's like and then sort of transition. Right. But sometimes you're not able to do that. Sometimes in, in the corporate world, things, are, things get so busy. There's pressure. There's, you know, uh, a whole lot of things going on. Even you're not able to do that. Mm -hmm. And plus people who have families, um, you know, especially just, you know, with, with young kids and everything, it gets, it gets hard. Mm -hmm. So in those cases, if you still, if you, if you've identified a problem in the marketplace and you really want to become a consultant, I would recommend that you save up six months of, uh, um, uh, of your expenses. Mm -hmm. um, and especially, you know, this, again, if, if the individual is married, I mean, spousal support is really important, right? That's one of the biggest, um, yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's one of the biggest uh, indicators of success in, in business uh, mm -hmm. uh, for, for people that are married. So those things have to be uh, talked about um, if, if your spouse is, is working, that's a plus, right? But if you're not, if you have young kids, for example, I'm just, I'm just saying young kids because I'm in that situation right now. Yeah. So I can relate. So um, if you've got a young family and your spouse is unable to work, they're, you know, they're taking care of the family. Those kinds of, those kinds of things have to be talked about because um, getting into business, again, it's, it's your income is going to be up and down, at least in the, in the run up to, uh, to starting your business. So given, so, um, uh, in addition to what you said, um, I would just add that, you know, you've got to sort out your personal um, situation as well. Yeah. And I mean, that's a perfect example of why somebody would reach out to you uh, if they're considering uh, going into consulting, right? Because there, it seems like this, um, many people think of the consulting world as just a, a faster way of making more money. And a lot of the things that you've talked about right now are a lot of times not even considered. And these are the type of things that can actually uh, it can get in the way of you becoming a successful consultant in the long run if you're not considering them, them up front, right? And so uh, from what I'm hearing, if I was to sum it up is I would say that uh, going into consulting from a full-time permanent job isn't just a financial decision, right? Not just strictly, hey, there's more money in it, so I'm going to do it. It's more of a lifestyle change because now you're in the uh, world of having to operate an actual business. And what does that mean? Well, first of all, do you have the spousal support, like you said, of somebody? Is the rest of your family uh, on board with you taking on this type of a risk that can affect them in a huge way, which is something that a lot of people might not be considering? Uh, is there, uh, do you have a specialty that you can offer to the market? Is there an actual demand for your specialty in the market, right? There's so many different things to think about. 
And we haven't even actually gotten into the detailed nitty gritty details of actually, you know, what does it actually take to run a business? Bookkeeping, insurance, uh, liability insurance, managing your own pension. There's so much involved that uh, I think that uh, for anybody listening should really have a full picture of what the transition into consulting looks like and uh, before they make that decision. So uh, the insight I think that you're giving us here is, uh, is of massive amounts of value to anybody who's, making, uh, who's thinking about doing this. Um, so uh, in terms of specific signals then, you wanna kind of figure out, is there a fit, do I have a skill? But then make sure that uh, you're speaking to Fahim to, to actually really consider all of the uh, different dimensions that are involved in, in going into consulting uh, and then uh, pull the trigger on it, right? Would, would, would you add anything else to that, Fahim? Nothing else. <laughs> okay, okay, excellent. I'm just, no, yeah. no, I'm just, uh, I'm just being, uh, yeah. I was just joking. Yeah, yeah. Um, what and I'm playing a bit add... of devil's advocate here because I've actually yeah. gone through this process in my own career, but I want right. to start asking these questions from the point of view who's just considering uh, doing this because yeah. uh, when I first did it, I'll tell you, there wasn't anybody like you that I could reach out to that would actually explain a lot of these things to me. And uh, much like with everything else in my business analysis career, I had to find out the hard way about, you know, what the regulatory requirements are of running a business, right? What are the filing deadlines? What, you know, bookkeeping, oh, there's so much involved in doing this that uh, I found out the hard way. I don't want other people to find out the hard way. That's part of the reason why your insight on this is so important to us. Um, the uh, other question that I really wanted to um, look into it is, aside from actually uh, doing the transition and the, the family life, can, is there, are there any other major difficulties that a person could face in, uh, in trying to make that transition? That's what I was trying to you know, add to, and I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah. So, you know, when you transition into a business, um, you wake up in the morning and you don't have a boss telling you what to do, right? So you have to know what you need to be doing and you have to manage yourself. You are right. your own boss. That's, that's literally true, right? right? So, um, and it's not going to be all uh, hunky-dory. I mean, I, I don't want to like, you know, sugarcoat this. Oh, yes. Um, because yeah. even if you're highly disciplined, even if you've got, you wake up like early in the morning and you know, you're, you know, the way your day is going to go, the way you're going to build your business, et cetera, et cetera, things change rapidly, right? Mm -hmm. So your plans uh, very rarely go, uh, 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 things rarely go according to plan. So you got to have, you know, uh, your wits about you when you do this and you have to expect that, you know, things, things will go awry mm -hmm. and uh, you have to manage that process. So that's the biggest, that's the biggest uh, uh, shift. Right. that, uh, you know, you got to look out for. Okay. Okay. Uh, all very great advice. Um, in terms of the uh, steps that a person would take, we've already kind of talked a little bit about it, but uh, is there um, a specific set of challenges when it comes to actually landing clients? Uh, and I, I know that this is really your specialty because this is what you help people do is, is to help them land new uh, clients when they're transitioning into consulting. Is there any kind of pointers or advice that you could give to somebody who is, uh, uh, again, this is like one of the many different areas of consulting that you have to, challenge, uh, that you have to tackle, but bringing in new businesses is, is one of the most difficult ones. From that dimension, are there uh, issues that people face in trying to land clients and uh, wonder uh, some of the things that they should consider when it comes to that dimension of, of doing consulting? Yeah, so we've talked about specialization a lot. Yeah. And uh, I'm gonna stick to I'm gonna come back to specialization. I think it's it's really really important in uh, you know, when it comes to you know growing your business. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing: in the early days, sometimes you don't know what your specialty is. Like sometimes, yes, you you have um, you see a market, you see an opportunity, you see a problem, etc. But then when you get in there and you you know do more research and uh, you know you execute your sales process, you may have some challenges. You know, and sometimes things might change, markets might change. Like just, uh, uh, for example, let's say somebody started a consulting business this January, right? Mm -hmm. And they had a different way, uh, outlook of the market. And then the market suddenly changed in March, right? So um, um, it's important to be flexible upfront. Sometimes when you get into consulting, you'll want to do, you, you'll want to be a generalist, right? right? Uh, and, and, and I don't want to like uh, uh, be mis- uh, 
uh, I don't want to miscommunicate this because being a generalist up front just to understand what's out there and how you're going to like, uh, you know, penetrate uh, uh, your market segment, your niche. Uh, sometimes that's, that's required. You want to like, you know, touch different uh, uh, markets and different types of projects and see, okay, if, uh, you know, whether that's something that, uh, that you'll, be able to, you'll, you'll be able to do. But then, you know, that's only in the early days. Very soon, you're going to realize that you can't focus on many things. You've got to pick your, um, your niche, pick your specialty and go with it. Right. And in the early days, in the early days, sometimes, you know, if you're lucky, you're, you, you know what your specialty is and you go straight for that. But oftentimes it doesn't happen. You know, things change, markets change, technology changes, people change, uh, you know, your, your, your clients change. So you've got to be flexible in, in, uh, uh, in, uh, up front. Mm -hmm. But then very quickly, you've got to be um, very mindful of the fact that when you, if you want to grow your business, you've got to like draw a line in the sand fast and, and pick your specialty. So right. it's, a, it's a bit of a fine balance there. Yeah, yeah. So the way that I would, uh, the way I think about that is if you don't know what your specialty is, you should really kind of uh, do some research into that, right? As a generalist, look around, you know, can I build a specialty around something before I make that jump? But something that you mentioned in there actually kind of caught my ear. And it's something that uh, a lot of our business analysts inside our community might wonder about. You said, uh, you know, whatever your sales process is, right? Now, see that in itself is going to come as a huge surprise to many business analysts or many people who've been working full-time in permanent positions because they're thinking, well, why do I need a sales process, right? Again, this is one of the things that you need to think about because if you're a consultant, you have to make sure you're essentially building out a small uh, version of the type of businesses that you support as a business analyst, right? As an analyst, you know that the company you work for has a lot of different areas, right? They have a sales department who's responsible for bringing in money. They might have an R&D department who's responsible for building products. They, you might have uh, a you know, customer onboarding department who's responsible for bringing your customers on board and making sure they get what they paid for. There is so much infrastructure that your own company has. And for a lot of analysts, I want them to think about getting into consulting uh, as a miniature way of building that company that you work for, for yourself. That company is going to need to have a sales process. It's going to need to have a lot of business infrastructure that you need to build. And so that I think is, is very valuable for a lot of people to understand. Uh, I want to be respectful of your time, Fahim. So I'll, I'll leave the rest of the questions there. But for anybody who is considering getting into consulting, seriously considering getting into consulting in an area of business analysis or really anything else, uh, I'd advise that you uh, reach out to Fahim, make sure you're connected with him on LinkedIn because Fahim publishes a lot of uh, information that is relevant for people who are looking to make this switch or relevant for people who've actually tried to make the switch and are having a hard time landing clients. Uh, make sure you're connected with Fahim. I'm gonna leave all of his information there. Fahim, uh, I want to thank you uh, so much for taking the time to uh, speak to us about, uh, about consulting today. Hey, the pleasure is mine. Thank you so much uh, for having me on the show, Emal. Yeah, yeah, it's been great, and we'll be in touch.